Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to invest in international stocks and also emerging market stocks. Um, so I'm going to be using the Fidelity uh, Roth IRA investment platform. So, I mean, th this is a, a really good platform that I like to use. It has a lot of great research tools. So let's get straight to it. So I'm here at the Fidelity News and Research page, and I want to go ahead and click on ETFs. And it basically, it takes me to the screener here. Uh, and, and, and what I really wanted to go is I want to go to market cap and here I'm able to select which markets I want to invest in. And so if we want to invest in international and emerging market funds, we're going to go to international multi and large cap and you should get a good uh, selection of ETFs to, uh, invest, to choose from. And so in, in case you don't know, the uh, ETF is an exchange traded fund and basically what it is, it's a, it's a fund that tracks a specific index. Uh, and basically holds a, a sort of sort of a diversified uh, portfolio of stocks, and, and th that's why it's called exchange traded fund. Uh, so a really uh, good ETF that I like is this Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund ETF shares, and I'll, I'll explain why I like this one. Um, so this is the Vanguard Total International Stock Index Fund, uh, and it's basically. Um, a fund that, that has a variety of different international stocks and if I scroll down here I'm able to see the the the, the portfolio composition so we see that 43 percent of the stocks are Asian stocks 39 percent are in Europe stocks and then 7 percent North America and then you have a little bit of Latin America Middle East and Africa uh, if you wanted to get a, a, a sense of what countries are these stocks are in uh, you see that 16 percent is in Japan 11% is in China, you have some United Kingdom stocks as well as Canadian, France, Switzerland, and Germany. Uh, so that's pretty good. Now if I click on market cap, 70% uh, of these companies in this fund are considered large cap stocks. So these are big companies, uh, which, which relatively are safer than investing in, in mid, mid cap and small cap. Um, but, but that all goes back to how much risk you're willing to take, uh, but generally, you know, for, Personally, for myself, I like to have a, a, a huge bulk of my investments in, in just big companies because I know, uh, you know, they're, they're, they have a higher chance of, of continuing to succeed and continuing to generate profits. Uh, but again, I also like mid cap and small cap because there's, there, there, that also means that there, there could be uh, more room for growth in those companies. Now, if we look at the sector and industry, uh, we see that 8% of the stocks in this fund uh, our banking stocks, you have some pharmaceutical stocks, insurance, uh, oil, gas, and composite. You have some semiconductor tech companies, internet and direct marketing, retail, metals and mining. And then you have a whole bunch of other uh, sectors and industries that are here. So right away, you get a lot of diversification. Um, so you don't have to worry about picking individual stocks and you can just focus on getting a, a wide exposure to the international markets. So let's take a look at some of the top portfolio holdings. If I scroll up here, uh, it looks like you know the top holding is Alibaba. You have Tencent Holding, Taiwan Semiconductor, Nestle, uh, Roshi Holding, Nevada's ASLML, and Toyota. So you know right away you get a sense of, of some of the top holdings in this portfolio, and and you know it's it's good to know. And then if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to figure out you know all the other companies that are involved, you see that there's seven thousand four hundred and fifty six. Um, uh, companies. Now, let's say if you didn't want to invest in, in all the companies, maybe you wanted to uh, invest in select, you can go ahead and just research the ticker symbol here and you can invest in the stocks individually. Uh, but overall, it looks like, you know, the technical analysis looks like the the sentiment of the inter international markets, both short-term, mid-term, and long-term uh, are both really positive and strong outlook for the international market. So personally, uh, international markets right now, I mean, we're in, we're in January 1st of 2021, and, you know, we're, we're, we're going through this pandemic, coronavirus, and, um, you know, personally, you know, the, the S&P 500 and the, the Vanguard VTI, which is the U.S. domestic uh, stock ETF, is trading at 27 times uh, per earnings. For, personally, for me, I feel like that's a little high. Now, that could be a indicator that that's a uh, uh, you know the, the future outlook of the US market is is good given the high P ratio but personally for me I like to buy stocks when they're cheap and right now if we look at the price to earnings for this fund we see that the price to earnings uh, trailing 12 month 
is 19 times. So that's uh, it's you know it's price lower. So you know if we if we if we get this formula, basically you're you're paying a lower price for the for the amount of earnings. Now that's good because that's that means you're buying at a lower price for the same amount of earnings. Um, so that that with that being said, let's keep going and see what else we need to figure out. So if you want to get a sense of the general uh, performance of international markets, you can see you can go to uh, this section here where it says how is it performing. And you can basically get a sense of how how this, you know, what what are the expected returns for this type of fund. So, uh, for the the life of this fund, this the the VXUS has generated uh, 4.42 percent uh, on an annual basis. Uh, you can even uh, you can even say market return is 4.5 percent. Uh, we see that this one hasn't been um, as active for the last 10 years. Actually, it has, but so you get a 5% return there. Um, so generally, this is what you can expect to make. Uh, if you look at the one-year average, uh, it's 10% return. Uh, and then you can also get a sense here. OK, so let's go back to where we came from. And we saw some asset allocations. Um, so uh, now that we got a sense of that, you know, this, this gives us a pretty good idea of, of the type of exposure we get in international markets. I mean, obviously it looks like a lot of it's coming from uh, Japan. And, and then you have some China stocks, which is 11%. Now China is considered a, an emerging market. So, you know, if you wanted to go dissect and, and go further deeper into emerging markets and, and away from developed markets, then you can also search for uh, emerging market funds. So like, for example, if we took a look at IEMG, which is an iShares core emerging markets. Uh, this is a, a fund that's more tailored and, and, and shaped for uh, emerging market stocks. And, and if we go to the asset allocation down below uh, and we get a look at the countries, we see that the majority of the, the country exposure is coming from China, which is 36%. You have Taiwan, South Korea, India, and Brazil. Uh, some of these holdings you, you, you'll see are you know, Alibaba, Tencent. Um, so this is emerging markets. So again, if you wanted to get more specific and, and invest, uh, you know, have a more concentrated uh, uh, focus on emerging markets, then you would search for a emerging market ETF. Uh, but again, going back to the, the VX, US, you know, you got some developed markets. You have Japan. You have some of the, you know, the, the more stable markets, which... Uh, I feel will help reduce the volatility, but at the same time, you get some exposure to that, you know, emerging market uh, from, from from the China stocks. So I hope this video was helpful. And, you know, once once you're ready to buy and you make your choice, again, make sure you do all your research or you can also speak to a licensed professional to help you execute the trades. But once you're ready, you simply just go to the to the buy and, you know, it'll, it'll ask you, you know, what how many how many shares you want to buy and at what price and then you can go ahead and select the market or you can select the limit order uh, to 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 execute the trade. So I hope this video was helpful. If you uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, I would appreciate if you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos on investment tutorials. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thank you.